Uh, our next panelist is Dr. Kevin Smith. He's a vascular interventional radiologist with Roper Radiologists uh, here locally in Charleston with, with the Roper St. Francis Hospitals. Uh, Kevin's a product of training at Emory and Johns Hopkins, and he was smart enough to come back to Charleston. And we're very fortunate to have him here today to talk to us about renovascular disease and renal artery stenting. I'd like to thank Brett and Chris and the directors for inviting me back to talk at the, this year's meeting. Uh, my topic is renal artery stenting, um, and with the uh, current um, uh, CORAL trial that was just published in the New England Journal of Medicine uh, in January, I figured that it'd be good to take a look at the evidence for renal artery stenting and uh, go through some of the studies that led us to where we are today. Uh, and one of the important reasons for looking at this, if you go on the internet today, the uh, first thing that you see are ads uh, for law firms um, looking for cases. Was your stent uh, procedure necessary? You click on this and you have four um, lawyers from New York looking for cases to, to go after. Um, so we need to make sure we're putting in uh, stents appropriately in patients. And I think the days of the drive-by are, are going by the wayside, which is good for patients. And uh, I think there are definitely patients who uh, benefit from this procedure. And hopefully some of these studies will, will guide us to more appropriate uh, placement of renal artery stents. Um, so the goals of the discussion, uh, first briefly we'll discuss pathophysiology, renal, renal artery stenosis, although it overlaps with what Tom just talked about, so we'll go through that very quickly. And then a review of some of the studies that have shaped uh, the current landscape of renal artery stent stenting, and most importantly, the CORAL study. Um, the drive-bys uh, over the span of time from 1996 to 2000, um, the number of renal artery stenting procedures increased by 364 uh, percent with a cost of uh, 200 million to Medicare in 2000. Uh, this is because renal artery stenosis is common, um, estimated 30 percent in patients having coronary angiography and up to 50 percent in patients having peripheral angiography. Um, just a quick busy slide, but basically to say that when the renal <clears throat> juxtaclamerular apparatus sees less perfusion, renin is released, which leads overall to increased uh, vasoconstriction and fluid retention. Uh, so there are two types of renal artery stenosis mediated hypertension. Um, with unilateral renal artery stenosis and normally perfused contralateral kidney, uh, results are increased peripheral resistance, but um, volume expansion is limited somewhat due to compensation by the normal kidney. And patients with bilateral stenosis or contralateral renal dysfunction, volume expansion and increased peripheral resistance lead to um, <clears throat> hypertension, but of course all these patients have uh, some form of essential hypertension as well. Uh, up to 27% of patients with renal artery stenosis develop chronic renal failure in six years. Uh, this is in part due to decreased blood flow and uh, hypertensive insults. So the first uh, review of studies is a review of 10 studies performed between 1991 and 97, uh, none of which were randomized. Um, 416 renal arteries were stented in 379 patients. Uh, hypertension was cured by stenting in 9% overall and 16% in patients with normal initial renal function. Uh, complications were 13%, ranging from blood transfusion to surgical bypass, which I think we would all agree would be a very high complication rate. Uh, renal function improved in 26%, stabilized in 48%, and deteriorated in 26%. Uh, so the first attempt at randomized trial was the DRASTIC study, which is a Dutch trial, uh, Dutch Renal Artery uh, Stenosis Interventional Co uh, Cooperative. 106 patients were randomized uh, either to medical therapy uh, or uh, angioplasty. And uh, this trial stated that there's no significant advantage of renal artery angioplasty over antihypertensive therapy. 
Um, several problems with the drastic trial, insufficient sample size to accurately show a difference. Uh, angioplasty was used, but uh, not stenting, and renal artery stenosis was uh, defined as 50% in this trial. Furthermore, the uh, investigators allowed 22 of the 50 patients in the medical therapy group to cross over uh, for poorly controlled hypertension and receive angioplasty. Uh, we now know that stenting is better than uh, angioplasty alone for uh, renal artery stenosis. Um, and one of the randomized trials that showed this was a trial um, published in The Lancet in 1999. Uh, 42 patients were randomized to angioplasty, 43 patients to uh, stent placement. Primary success was judged as less than 50% residual stenosis. Um, and primary success was 57% in the angioplasty group, 88% in the stenting group, and patency rates were also better in the stenting group at six months so with 75% patency. Uh, so <clears throat> there's several trials um, recently that look to prove that renal artery stenting is uh, better than medical treatment alone. Um, the first two were pretty flawed, um, but we'll go through um, those trials. The first one was a STAR trial, which uh, 19 centers in the Netherlands and one in France. Patients were randomly assigned to stent plus uh, medical therapy or medical therapy alone. Uh, the patients had impaired renal function, and osteostenosis was defined as reduction in luminal diameter of 50% or more within one centimeter of the aortic wall. Uh, exclusions for the trial were renal size less than eight centimeters, uh, renal artery diameter less than four millimeters, and creatinine clearance less than 15, diabetes with proteinuria, and also patients with malignant hypertension. Um, medication only group, uh, blood pressure control um, was targeted with uh, less than 140 over 90 uh, being the goal. They all received statin therapy um, and aspirin, as well as smoking cessation counseling. Um, patients in the medication group could uh, undergo stenting for refractory hypertension while receiving the max dose of antihypertensives or malignant hypertension or pulmonary edema. Uh, the stent group received the same medical treatment as the medical group and the stent that was used was the Pal Palmaz Genesis stent. Uh, technical success was described as less than 50% residual stenosis. Uh, Follow-up was over the course of two years. Uh, the primary endpoint was renal function uh, worsening, which is 20% or greater decrease in estimated creatinine clearance compared to uh, baseline. Stent group underwent imaging to exclude restenosis, and if they had restenosis, they uh, underwent um, reintervention and reevaluation of renal function one month after. Uh, secondary endpoints were procedural complications, changes in blood pressure, uh, incidence of refractory or malignant hypertension, and pulmonary edema, um, cardiovascular mortality and morbidity, and a total uh, mortality. 140 patients were randomly assigned, uh, 76 to the medication group, 64 to the stent group. They were followed over two years. Uh, the stent group was analyzed as intention to treat. Uh, only 46 of the 64 were stented. Uh, this was because 12 uh, in the group had less than 50% stenosis at angiography. There are two technical failures. One had angioplasty alone, two patients declined, and one died pre-procedure. Uh, the bottom line of the study was that there's no significant difference in progression uh, of renal failure over two years in those treated with stenting and medication compared with those treated with medication only. Um, the groups also did not differ in blood pressure control or cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. And three patients had procedure-related deaths, one required dialysis, and therefore the investigators concluded there is more harm than benefit to renal artery stenosis. Uh, 
Um, the limitations of the study, uh, it, oh, the degree of renal artery stenosis was overestimated by non-invasive imaging, and one-third of the patients were not treated due to significant, to insignificant amount of uh, renal artery stenosis. Um, there was a high failure and complication rate, and the trial was underpowered to estimate efficacy. So the next attempt at um, evaluating renal artery stenosis was the ASTRAL trial. Uh, 806 patients were randomly assigned again to medication or medication plus stenting. Uh, the primary outcome, again, was renal function. Secondary outcomes, blood pressure, time to renal and major cardiovascular events, and mortality. The median time for follow-up was 34 months. Um, so the first, uh, the primary endpoint mean change in um, serum creatinine, actually the reciprocal was used for uh, their purposes. I think it's better uh, for me to look at what we usually look at for creatinine. And uh, the, there was no significant change. There was a difference between the two groups of 0 0.02 milligrams per de deciliter change in serum creatinine over the course of the study. Um, again, there's no uh, change in blood pressure. Systolic blood pressure was not significantly different uh, between the two groups, and diastolic blood pressure change was actually smaller in the stenting group than in the medical therapy group. There's also no major uh, change in cardiovascular events in the two groups. They had similar rates of renal events, major cardiovascular events, and death. Uh, 73 renal events occurred in 57 patients in the revascularization group compared to 80 events in the uh, 58 patients in the medical therapy group. Uh, a total of 238 cardiovascular events were reported in 141 patients in the revascularization group compared to 244 and 145 patients in the medical therapy group. So very similar between the two. Uh, mortality, you can see the lines parallel each other. Um, 103 deaths in the stenting group, 106 deaths in the medical therapy group. Uh, no significant difference. Um, serious complications associated with stenting occurred in 23 patients, including two deaths, three amputations of toes or limbs. Conclusion of the investigators, there's substantial risk with no significant clinical benefit. Multiple problems with the astral trial. Sample, sarge, sample size was large enough, however, uh, it was prone to selection bias um, because the physicians had the option of putting in patients that they were undecided on medical management versus stenting. So, Patients who they clearly thought needed stenting or clearly thought it, they needed medical therapy were not included. 25% um, of the patients included had normal renal function, and a significant number had unilateral disease. 41% um, had less than 70% stenosis, uh, no standardization of imaging interpretation, and there's a high complication rate, 9% major complication, 24 hours, and 20% from 24 hours to one month, including two deaths, which is very high. Uh, multiple centers, low volume, which may explain uh, the high complication rates. So that brings us to the CORAL trial. So after those two trials, um, there was an effort to um, get a more definitive study so that we can actually make clinical decisions based on um, the evidence. And so this is a well done trial. 947 patients with atherosclerotic renal artery stenosis and either systolic hypertension while taking two or more antihypertensive drugs or chronic kidney disease. Uh, the patients were randomly assigned to medical therapy plus renal artery stenting or medical therapy alone. Exclusions uh, were renal artery stenosis due to fibromuscular dysplasia, chronic kidney disease from a cause other than ischemic, serum creatinine higher than four, and kidney length uh, less than seven centimeters. Unless contraindicated, the patients all received uh, ACE inhibitor with or without hydrochlorothiazide and torvastatin with amlodipine. 
Um, target blood pressure was less than 140 over 90 in patients uh, without coexisting conditions and 130 over 80 with uh, diabetes and chronic kidney disease. All renal arteries with 60% or more stenosis were stented. Uh, they lowered the, the percentage during the trial to, to get more patients, and then they uh, increased the time to follow up afterwards. Um, patients were all stented with Palmaz Genesis stent. Um, crossover from medical therapy group to stent group was only allowed if a qualified outcome uh, had, been, had occurred and the following conditions were met. And in your in your renal failure, complete occlusion of all renal arteries, and at least one kidney more than eight centimeters in length. <clears throat> so the primary endpoint of this trial was occurrence of major major cardiovascular or renal events, um, death from cardiovascular or renal cause, and that was described as death from cardiovascular or renal causes, stroke, uh, myocardial infarction, hospitalization for CHF progressive renal insufficiency, 30% um, reduction from baseline, or a need for permanent renal uh, replacement therapy. Effect of the treatment on systolic blood pressure over time was the second or, secondary endpoint. Um, so stents were placed in 434 of uh, 459 patients in the stent group with reduction of stenosis from 68% to 16%. Uh, the most common complication was arterial dissection, uh, which occurred in 11 patients. The results of the clinical of the coral trial, no significant difference in primary endpoint um, between stent and medical therapy group, 35.1% uh, compared to 35.8%. Um, at baseline, the participants were taking a mean of 2.1 antihypertensive medications, which increased in both groups um, to 3.3 in the stent group and 3.5 in the medical therapy group alone. Uh, systolic blood pressure uh, was slightly lower in the stent group, which was statistically significant, but uh, only two, two millimeters of mercury difference. Um, so the conclusions from the trial was when added to high quality medical therapy, renal artery stenting provides no additional benefit. Medical therapy without stenting is the preferred treatment for a majority of patients with renal artery stenosis. Um, so what's the role for renal artery stenting? Well, as we have already talked about, uh, this, the coral trial did have um, very good compliance for all their patients, which in uh, the community is obviously not quite as, as good as they did in this tr stringent trial. Um, but I think that this, these trials do reduce the temptation um, for stenting any artery that we see with renal artery stenosis. So I think the, the um, number of renal artery stenting cases have already come back down to a more appropriate level. And so the bottom line is, um, we should all, especially in the current environment, document a good clinical indication. Patients should have a hemodynamically significant stenosis. Um, and patients with accelerated hypertension, resistant hypertension, and malignant hypertension um, should be treated, not controlled on their um, medications. And renal artery stenosis with progressive chronic kidney disease with bilateral stenosis or stenosis of uh, artery with uh, dysfunctioning um, contralateral artery. And um, some patients with uh, unexplained congestive heart failure and sudden unexplained pulmonary edema with renal artery stenosis. Um, so clearly um, there's still a role, um, but we need to be more selective with who we treat so that um, we can uh, increase our uh, positive outcomes. Um, so enjoy Charleston while you're here. Thanks for the opportunity to talk, and thanks a lot.